Welcome back. This is the second in a series of videos on reasoning tables. In the previous video, we showed you how to build a reasoning table. Here is the table we built. The focus of this video is to show you how to generate verification conditions, also known as VCs. We're going to generate the VCs using the entries we made in this reasoning table. The previous video might have left you asking, why build a reasoning table? And the answer is, so we can generate VCs. Which begs the question, why generate VCs? We're going to use these VCs to prove the correctness of the operation in this reasoning table. First, let's review the operation that is at the heart of this reasoning table. The procedure header is here, and the procedure body is here. The insurer's clause states that the outgoing value of parameter i is equal to the incoming value of parameter i. Because of this, we're going to generalize the name of the operation to do nothing. We're going to update the reasoning table's name to do nothing, and then we're going to simplify the column names of the reasoning table to state, code, assume, and confirm. Now let's look at how many VCs we're going to have to generate for the operation do nothing. That depends on the type of statements in the operation as well as how many statements are in the operation. This is a fairly simple operation. We'll demonstrate more complex ones in the future. For the do nothing operation, it is just straight line code. There is no branching and there are no loops. Because of this, there will be three VCs for the do nothing operation, one for each state. One for state zero, one for state one, and one for state two. Okay, let's move back to the reasoning table. In state 0, we have to confirm that it is OK to call the increment operation. We do this by proving the conclusion that appears in the confirm column by using the premises that appear in the assume column. Likewise, in state 1, we have to verify that it is OK to call the decrement operation. Again, we're going to use the premises to prove the conclusion. Finally, in state 2, we have to verify that do nothing's post condition which is I2 equals I0, can be proved by making use of all the premises. Now, we're finally going to write down the VCs, and we're going to use logic's implication statement to do it. For VC number one, we're going to look at state zero in the reasoning table. First, we're going to write down all the premises from the assume column, followed by the implication symbol, then we're going to write down the conclusion from the confirm column. An important point to note is when we get to the second VC, we get to utilize the premises from the previous VCs. Let's label the premises from VC number one, P1, and P2, and then write them down as premises in VC number two. And now we write down the premise from state number one, which is I1 equals I0 plus one, followed by the implication symbol, followed by the conclusion from state one. Now, let's write down VC number three. Again, we get to utilize the premises from the previous VCs, so we write down P1 and P2 and P3, which comes from VC number two, followed by I2 equals I1 minus one, the premise from the current state, then the implication symbol and the conclusion. And there you have it. We've now generated all the VCs for the do nothing operation. The next step is to prove each of the VCs and thus the correctness for do nothing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.